Mr. Clements, I'm going to ask a few questions, and the other members will have that opportunity too. Uh, when I dial 911, if God forbid I'm in that position, uh, I pray to God that the person who responds has been carefully recruited, had been carefully trained, and is ready to come to the aid of my family as quickly as possible. I'm counting on that, and I think every American is counting on that, no matter where they live. And so the question, obviously, is the COPS program make that likelihood better or not? Are we investing our money in a way that makes a difference? You've been a real cop, starting patrolling the beat and working your way up to chief of the department. Did you see any measurable impact of cop, federal cop funds on your performance in your police department? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The funding from the federal government and the funding in particular from the cops office absolutely has been invaluable from where I came from. I will tell you that uh, police officers have a tough assignment in our communities. Uh, basically, the mission is the same in all municipalities to reduce crime, fear, and social disorder, protecting constitutional rights, protecting human rights. It's a complicated assignment that police officers have. The value that the cops office has provided to me when I was boots on the ground uh, prior to my elevation to leadership roles in the department, and then after my elevation to those roles, particularly as chief, has been very helpful in building community partnerships and in driving at problem solving uh, in the community. So it's the connection in the community where the COPS office has given guidance and uh, valuable resources in the terms of grant funding, training and technical assistance, and uh, as well through our publications and resources. Thank you. Let me, let me get down to the hard issues because I know that we're going to reach them and the questioning from members. There's no question that the United States still struggles with the issue of race, still struggles with the issue of immigrants and how they are to be treated by our official agencies of government and certainly how they are treated on the streets and neighborhoods of this uh, country on a regular basis. We've seen some outrageous examples. George Floyd comes to mind immediately. And we've heard rhetoric from some political figures who are branding immigrants as not even humans, but calling them animals. And that sort of rhetoric and that sort of conduct really puts special pressure on the police. Can you tell me if the COPS program addresses this in any way? Uh Thank you, Chairman. It certainly does uh, in all of our programs, but specifically in the CHIP, the COPS hiring program, the flagship program, there is extra consideration for agencies and law enforcement executives who have a strong implementation plan hand in hand with their community members to drive at uh, trust and legitimacy in their neighborhoods. Again, I think all of the work we do in policing around the country is stronger and more valuable and has real impact in communities around this country when uh, conversations ignite ideas and the, uh, the message police leaders are given from their community, are community informed, and then the message that police leaders give to their rank and file and their partners, law enforcement partners, are community driven. So community informed, and community-driven approaches to the real problems in a community are, are you know, the, in essence, police officers around this country and police agencies are looking to improve the quality of life. And that is done through pro problem-solving techniques. Mr. Clements, uh, on four or five different occasions, I put up a notice at the Police Training Academy in Chicago that I'm gonna be sitting in a classroom uh, for an hour and invite any member of the police force who, from that community who wants to come in for an off the record, no, no holds barred uh, conversation uh, to come on down. And they show up, I'm amazed, to see a politician for goodness sakes, because they wanna get something off their chest. They wanna tell their side of the story. They want me to understand what it means to wear that shield and to risk your life out on the streets on a daily basis and how you have to make momentary, you know, just a few seconds of judgment. It could be life or death judgment for yourself, for innocent people around you, or for the victim. 
and how tough that is and how they think it's unfair that sometimes there are clips taken from videos that don't tell the whole story and they want the whole story told. Do you deal with that? Have you dealt with that in your capacity as a chief and with the COPS program? So throughout my career, uh, going to roll calls, uh, being the leader of a, a large organization, and now in my role as the director of the COPS office, yes, absolutely, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for identifying that. It is an extremely challenging role to be a police officer in American streets today. I mean, it's uh, oftentimes, you know, police officers are sent to a situation with uh, little or ambiguous information. Uh, they never know what hat they're putting on as they arrive on a scene, whether it's a rescue hat or a tactical hat, and it's, uh, it's a complex uh, profession. And I think the training that you refer to is critical to uh, giving police the confidence to go out there and, and perform this very challenging, uh, tough assignment on American streets. Thank you, Mr. Clements. Senator Graham. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Ms. Clements. Um, 